All right, so I'm gonna teach you how to play Dragon Ball Sparking Zero in this guide, and I'm gonna give you lots of tips about every single system you need to know in order to go from a beginner to sort of an above average player. This game has more gameplay mechanics and systems than I do back hair, and that's saying something. So the only thing that's not gonna be covered in this guide is the super duper pro level stuff that you really have to work your way up to. It's not something you can just jump into. You need to master the things that we're covering in this video before we can talk about that in another video. So let's kick things off with something simple because if you're coming at this from a 2D fighting game, it will take some time to get used to it. So let's talk about movement options. You move around with the left stick, you can do so in any direction, and you can think of your shoulder buttons on the left as kind of your air control, and your R2 button as kind of your turbo, which we'll get into a sec. So the callouts that I'm gonna be giving here are gonna be for the PlayStation controller, but in the pinned comment, I'm gonna list how it maps to the Xbox controller, just in case you're not sure. But anyway, L1 makes you jump, and then while you're jumping, if you hold it, you can start flying up, or if you find yourself falling off a cliff or something like that, you can hold L1 and you can fly up, and then L2, if you hold that, you'll come down. Now, if you tap X, again, we're talking PlayStation controls, and do a directional flick on the left stick, you'll dash in that direction. So let's say like left and X or right and X at the same time, or even back and forward. This will be a super handy move, but it uses key quickly. It gets you out of jail sometimes. It lets you dodge a bunch of stuff. And if you're only looking to play this game casually, this is a move you're gonna rely on a lot because it's gonna allow you to dodge. Oh my God, I'm losing my voice. It's gonna allow you to dodge a bunch of incoming stuff. In fact, it's gonna make the fight against grade eight Vegeta really easy. If you're struggling with that, I already put up a video for that on my channel. But anyway, if you tap X while you're close to your opponent, you'll move in with a step. If you're a bit further out, kind of like at medium range, you'll move in with a dash. And just one thing to note, and you do that little quick dash that I was telling you to do, so like a direction to the side and X, but you're close to the opponent, you're gonna do acrobatics to change your positioning. It's not gonna be the quick dash. So the quick dash does not happen if you're at hugging distance. Now remember I told you to treat R2 kind of like a turbo button? Well, if you hold R2 and X, you'll enter into a dash state called Dragon Rush, and you'll quickly burn key here, but you're gonna move really quickly. And while you're in this Dragon Rush state, you can actually press R2 and X again, and you'll move in super fast to your opponent, and it won't be at a straight angle. You might come up behind them, beside them, which can be very helpful. So this is a great way to close space, and in case you can't see your opponent, things like that. But if you keep getting spanked when you do it, if you're just spamming it and your opponent is hitting you out of it or doing things to you, then you're probably relying on it too much or not following up with anything useful. Now with the basic movement options out of the way, let's talk about your basic attack options. So your square button is your main attack button, it's called Rush. You can mash it for an auto combo that doesn't really do much damage and you can charge it. The amount you charge will determine how far your opponent flies if you hit them. You can also be sneaky when you're charging it because you can teleport during the charge. So if you want to teleport while charging your move, what you want to do is as soon as little sparks come around your character or right as they're coming up, you want to let go of the button and then he'll teleport behind the opponent and he'll hit them that way. When you're charging up your attack, that's called a smash attack. And you can actually pick a direction to send your opponent in, assuming that the attack connects. So you can do up, you can do down. There's even sideways. It's different than a neutral charge. So what you can do with this is really handy because you can keep your opponent guessing which way you're going to hit because if they're just blocking regularly but you hit from above, you can connect. You can also use charged attacks to break opponent's guards. You can even teleport with them. So it's the same mechanic before where when you're charging and the sparks appear, as soon as the sparks are appearing, you let go and you will attack from behind. The thing to know though, if your opponent correctly guesses one of your directions, they might be able to actually open you up for an attack, but we'll cover that more when we're talking about blocking. Now let's move on to the triangle button. So by default, this thing shoots out those teeny tiny key blasts and you can hold it to charge for a bigger one. You're not really gonna be using that often, maybe sometimes just to pepper or annoy your opponents, but the important thing to know here is your triangle button acts differently when you're doing combos. So depending on what combo you're doing, it won't necessarily be a key blast. It might be a melee attack. It might be something else. It's a very useful button that will help you do really awesome combos, which of course we'll get into. By the way, it's important to know that your attacks have some distance to them and bigger attacks have more distance. So 
You don't need to be in kissing distance in order to attack your opponent. You can, you know, be several steps back, probably more than you might think. You can hit square and that attack will happen still. Now let's move on to basic defending. So R1 is your block button. You guard neutrally by default just by holding it. And you know, that's just blocking like any fighting game that has blocking like that. But if you move your stick up or down while you're guarding, you will guard high or you will guard low. And like I said before, if you guard the correct direction of a charged attack, you actually end up creating an opening for a counter attack. So you're kind of turning the tables on your opponent. You can also use the block button to teleport out of enemy attacks and counter them. That's complicated if you're a beginner and we'll cover that in a little bit. Now let's move on and talk about how to combo. So comboing in this game is not as hard as traditional fighting games, but it still takes plenty of skill and of course repetition memorization. You want to think of this game as really truly being a Dragon Ball simulation. So that means you want to have fast sequences where you do tons of attacks, you send your opponent flying, and then you follow up with even more attacks or a huge blast like a Gallic Gun Kamehameha, that kind of thing. Your combos are essentially started by your basic rush attacks. You have a handful of basic combo starters that you'll find pretty much across all characters. For example, if you hit rush three times and then hit triangle once or hold it, that's technically a combo. Or if you do four rush attacks or two rush attacks and then a triangle attack that you might charge up, that's a combo. But these aren't the combos that are gonna be winning you fights. These are just openers, these are starters. The point is that you follow these actions up with other attacks. One thing you need to know is that you cannot spam the same combo over and over and over again. So let's see what happens here, right? We do the rush two times, then triangle, and then we try to do that same sequence again, and it sends the opponent back. This is to keep spam out of the game and, you know, to prevent button mashing from being overpowering, overpowered or something like that. So just keep in mind that you can't keep spamming the exact same combo over and over again. You need breaks in between. And another important thing to know about combos is that in Sparking Zero, they're usually not true if you're doing them from the front, at least when you're doing basic combos. So what that means is a lot of combos or multiple combos that you're trying to link together, they'll have enough of a break period in between them that will allow your opponent to guard you. That's why spinning your opponent and kind of attacking them from behind, giving them really powerful, really rough, really fast, really hard back shots is important. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. So for now, let's take a look at a super duper basic combo. You got your four rush attacks, then up and triangle at the same time. This sends the enemy up in the air and we need to follow up on that. So what you can do is four rush, up triangle. And as soon as you do that up triangle, you hit X on your PlayStation controller in order to kind of move up to your opponent so that you can continue attacking them. But that X press, it's not going to do any damage on its own. It's just you closing space. So once you're up there, you can add in two triangle attacks. And what that means is we rush four times, then we up triangle to send the opponent up in the air. And right as we do that, we hit X in order to dash towards the opponent. And then we hit triangle two times so that we can keep our combo going. Now, boom, that's a combo, but it's not a good one. It's just to show you how the system works and we'll build on it in just a moment. So you don't even have to tap triangle twice in that example. That's just one thing you can do. You can press other buttons and see what happens. But let's talk about what a really good beginner's combo looks like. This combo is really great when you're starting out because it forces you to learn some technical aspects of the game while still implementing some mashing that you can get away with. So it's not asking too much of you right away but it's easing you in into the more advanced aspect of the game and it does a lot of damage and it's not that difficult to pull off after you do some reps with it so the combo i'm talking about is actually what we just started in the previous segment so remember how we did those two triangle attacks we're gonna follow that up by mashing the square button like it owes us money because it probably does the actual count is probably like a seven or something like that but for this case, for you as a beginner or inexperienced player, that count doesn't really matter. There's a part of this combo that we can just mash. So you want to mash, mash, mash. And then once in the combo, you get to kind of the double axe handle smash from overhead. That's when it gets more technical. And that's when you have to do triangle and circle at the same time. You'll send your opponent flying again. And then as soon as you send them flying again, you do triangle and circle for a second time and then you do your kind of like closing move on it and boom you just did like 14k damage with that so that's more than double the auto combo that you do by just mashing on the regular square button 
And it might seem hard at first, but with repetition, you'll be able to pull it off easily. So again, you have the controls up on the screen, I'm assuming. I don't know, I haven't done the video part of this yet, but you have the controls up on the screen right now. So it's four rush, up triangle, X in order to dash in. Then you do two triangle, and then you just mash, 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 mash on the square button until you do the double axe handle sending your opponent down. And as soon as they're flying down, you do triangle and circle at the same time. Then as soon as they're flying from that, you do it one more time to finish off the combo. So you want to build on this combo little by little, practice sequences of it. Start by practicing just the four hits and the up hit, then add in the dash, then add in the two triangle hits. Once you're comfortable with that, then start adding in the rest. And let me tell you a little bit about the timing for it. So the timing is maybe a little bit peculiar, but basically as soon as you do your up triangle part of the combo, you can immediately press your dash with X to get in close. You don't have to wait. And then once you're up there, you have more time than you think to press triangle twice. So you kind of don't need to be in, I don't know, panic mode. You don't need to mash the button. In fact, if you mash the button there, you'll end up doing a different combo that doesn't do that much damage. So when you're up there, you have plenty of time to do those two hits. And then technically, if we're being proper, when you're actually doing your rush hits afterwards, like the, the button mashing that I was telling you all about, the, the seven hits, you want to wait like a beat or like a millis a few milliseconds before you actually start doing that. But it doesn't really matter for what we're talking about here. You can just immediately start mashing and then you just keep mashing until you get that overhead double axe handle smash. And then, like I said, when they're flying in the air, you do the triangle circle. And then once you send them flying again with that, you do triangle and circle again. But anyway, this is just one combo. There's a bajillion different ones and you can put the knowledge of how to combo to use to come up with your own combos. You basically open up with your rush attacks. You try to extend them by launching the opponent, sending them flying, trying to follow up by literally following them and then continuing your attack. That's kind of the basic idea. Now let's talk about counters and evasion. This game has some pretty hardcore systems for that. The easiest one is the revenge counter. So basically, when someone is wailing on you like you're a useless sack of meat, you click in the right stick, you push them back, and then you can launch your own attack. This uses up a skill point, and those go up over time. You can see them in the top left or the top right with the blue UI counting up. Just keep in mind, these revenge counters can only be done when facing the opponent. Now. You also have the high speed evasion counter, which works against more attacks, including charged ones and blasts. You basically want to tap guard R1 right as the attack is about to connect with you so you can teleport away and launch your own counter attack. This is going to be really difficult when you're a beginner, but I still recommend going into the in-game battle training and practicing it. So high speed evasion counter because you want to familiarize yourself with it. And you just kind of want to know that it's there and, and try it out as you continue to kind of level up your own skill. Now, the thing is, you can't necessarily evade every single hit in a combo. Some things are going to be not evadable. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, we also have the super counter, which is definitely the hardest one. You kind of want to avoid this one while you're just starting out with the game. But you want to check it out in battle training just so you know what it's like. You basically push up and... Uh, a button in order to be able to instantly counter uh, an attack that your opponent is doing. So this will just be like the opponent is about to land a hit on you. Boom, you're instantly countering it. It doesn't cost any skill or anything like that. And you launch your own attack. It's super useful, but it's probably the hardest thing in the game if I had to uh, kind of quantify it, I guess. So it's not beginner friendly, but you want to know it's there. You want to try it out a few times and then later on you want to start incorporate, incorporating it in your game as you feel more comfortable, as you get better. Now let's talk about the Z counter, which is basically you tapping guard right as the teleport attack is about to hit you. If you do this at the right time, you're going to teleport behind the opponent. But just keep in mind that you can get into teleportation chains where your opponent teleports behind you, you teleport behind them, they teleport behind you, blah, 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 blah. As long as there's key or skill to support that. That can go on for a while, so just keep that in mind. This is Dragon Ball after all, right? Makes sense. Now then, remember I told you before that a lot of basic combos from the front, they're not necessarily true, so they'll, they'll have enough of a break to give your opponent time to block or do something else. Well, that's why it's so important to mix up your attacks, and that's why it's so important to give your opponent really powerful back shots. So, if you use a rolling hammer, you can actually turn your opponents back to you, 
and then their defensive options become a lot more limited. In fact, most fancy combos will have you turning your opponent around and attacking them and taking them from behind. And for Goku here, in this case, he can do rush three times, then triangle, and then he's going to turn out, turn over his opponent for those lovely back shots. What you can do is you can go into the move list and tab over to your rush combos to see if your character has a rolling hammer. Most of them do, some of them don't, but even if you don't have one, that's okay. It's a good idea to mix up your combos or like your false combos. So you can do that by simply kind of selecting a direction you want to teleport in and hitting R1, your guard button, while you're attacking. So like, let's say you do rush, 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 teleport, rush, 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 that kind of thing. So you can always teleport during your little combos and you can even sidestep by just picking a direction off to the side, hitting X. And again, it might not be a true combo, but you can potentially lure your opponent into a trap. Like let's say you're doing combo, 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 you sidestep and then you hold perception, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And you kind of counter them, you bait them into a counter, or maybe you even do a revenge counter. Although that's kind of like maybe a bit of a waste of skill points, but we'll talk about that stuff in a second. The point is you don't want to just run up to your opponent and mash one button in front of them. You want to vary up your attacks. You want to do, you want to vary up your positioning. Otherwise you'll be predictable. You'll be easy to counter. So you want to move around your opponent. You want to teleport behind them to the side, all that good stuff. And remember when in doubt, just go full throttle, go ham on the back shots to your opponent. They're going to, they're going to appreciate it. All right. Now let's talk about perception and super perception. It's really a useful ability. All you have to do is hold down circle. And if your opponent tries to rush you while you're holding down circle, you just counter them with perception. If you have skill points and they try to do a heavy hitting move, you'll counter those as well. It's called super perception, but don't think of perception as just a defensive tool. Kind of like what I was alluding to before. You can stop your combos midway, right? Then move backwards and maybe do a little dash with the, with the X button. And then once you kind of put that distance to you and your opponent, maybe they'll be tempted to charge towards you. But at that point you're holding perception and you just baited them into an attack. And you can even do that uh, just, you know, like I said before, with the regular revenge counters, but those cost skill points. So mm, maybe not the best way to to use those skill points. But super perception will require skill points as well. And if you have two skill points, you can even defend against or deflect, I should say, against huge blasts like a Gallic gun or a Kamehameha. So let's say that, you know, angry Vegeta is firing his Gallic gun at us and we have at least two skill points, all we need to do is hold circle and we're just going to deflect the Gala gun and his ego is going to take a massive bruising. Really quickly, I want to talk about impact actions and these are actions that happen when you and your opponent basically run into each other with the same action. They trigger different mini games that are very poorly explained by the tutorial. <laughs> now, this video is already long enough. I don't want to make it so overbearing but I already made an impact action video from before. You can check that out on the channel. It's also in the description. So again, it's not something that's going to happen too often, but you should know how to do these impact actions. It's fairly straightforward. It's just a five minute tutorial. Link is in the description. You can check that out some other time. All right, let's talk about some more basics. So if you want to transform, all you need to do is hold up on the D pad and follow the button prompts. You'll know when you have a transformation ready by having a little blue icon with an arrow in the top left or top right, depending where you are. And transformations cost skill points, so that's why sometimes, you know, your transformation is not ready when you think it should be ready. Fusions work the same way. You just do up on the D-pad, follow the on-screen prompts, but, 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 you need the exact same character variants. For, uh, you can't just like fuse Goku with any Vegeta. So Goku at the end of Z won't be able to fuse with GT Vegeta, for example. If you're doing like mid Goku or end Goku, he needs to fuse with mid or end Vegeta or whatever the case may be. By the way, if you're playing with a team and you want to tag in another character, just hold left on the D-pad and select whichever character you want from the on-screen prompts. Now let's talk about blast attacks, skills, boosting and charging. So if you want to fire a Kamehameha or other blasts, just hold R2 and press the corresponding button on screen. And it's the exact same for character skills that you have. So your blasts are going to cost key, your skills are going to cost skill points, but you can always recharge your key by holding down R2, and of course your skill points recharge over time. Now the thing with blasts is you don't want to just spam them because they're easy to deal with, because 
if I just fire a Kamehameha at you from, you know, I don't know, hundreds of meters away, and you're a super powered character, like everybody is on Dragon Ball, you can just like dodge that easily. You can block it. You can get out of the way. You want to think of these usually as combo enders, not necessarily always, but usually combo enders. You typically want to do them when you are at the end of a combo after like a heavy hit, or if you've sent your opponent flying and they haven't recovered yet. And so, you know, you hit them with a big blast. And sometimes you'll see a button prompt to boost your blast attacks. This can make them more powerful, but costs a key bar per boost. And if you boost too much, what you'll do is you'll get into like a tired state, kind of like that episode where Goku was sick and he had the, what did they even call it? Like key withdrawal or something like that? So if you overboost, you'll be basically paralyzed. You won't be able to move. You'll have to wait to recover before you can do anything again. So you always want to boost responsibly. Or if you need to go for broke and this is your only option, you know, you go for that risk. One thing that's really important to know is recovery in Sparking Zero. So you need to know what your recovery options are so that you're not stuck just like flying through the air or sitting on the ground for long periods of time, just getting pepper sprayed by a bunch of different attacks. So if you're still flying through the air, you can hit R1 guard after a few moments to recover. This will stop you from just, you know, flying backwards for a long time. If you're not sure about the timing, you can start by just mashing it, but eventually pay attention, you know, save your finger strength. <laughs> There's a lot of button pressing in this game. So uh, it's it's not instantly after you're sent flying that you can recover, but it's a couple of beats after that. And if you get smashed and you're about to hit the ground, just tap down on the left stick as you're about to hit the ground and you can recover immediately. Or if you want to rush your opponent from that position, you tap up and you'll immediately charge your opponent, you know, getting ready immediately to attack. When you are flat on the ground, though, you can recover by pointing the stick in basically any direction and hitting A, and you'll kind of, you know, roll up into that direction. Now, here's some other important things you should know that kind of are just miscellaneous facts. You can also throw by holding R1 and square, and you can defend the throw just by tapping R1 as the throw happens to you. You can also do a teleport attack to send the opponent flying by holding square and X, then hit X to chase, and then press one of the buttons to do a follow-up attack or hit them with one of your blasts. When you enter sparking mode, by the way, which you do by turbocharging your key to its absolute max, you don't necessarily want to immediately go for your ultimate attack. It'll be tempting to do your big spirit bomb or whatever you got, but see if you can pull off some combos first, because when you're in sparking mode, things that don't usually chain together into true combos now begin to chain together. I think people, as of this recording, they're still figuring out exactly what you can do with that, myself included, but you can pull off really big and long combos with kind of basic button presses when you're in sparking mode. So I know it's going to be tempting to immediately just do your big flashy attack, but see, see if you can get some combos in there first. If you can, that's great. All right, so in terms of next steps for you improving a Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, what you want to be doing, what you want to be thinking about is going into practice and battle practice, picking some of the topics we've talked about today and just getting those repetitions in, just practicing them. It's really going to make things easier just you know I, I know nobody likes the concept of uh i gotta go into the practice mode and practice this thing i know but you'll see that it doesn't take as long as you might think to learn these things but it's going to be so much harder to try to use them in a match if you've never practiced them before and for a lot of things it's going to be impossible because you just don't know the timing or you don't know you know the setups things like that so you can't do everything at once focus on one thing at a time Maybe you want to practice that combo that I showed you before. So, you know, jump into training, practice that combo, that kind of thing. This game doesn't have high technical execution, except for a few mechanics. So even if you're a slow learner like me, you'll pick things up relatively quickly. But again, that has to come with repetition. Let me know what you want to see in future guides. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like, hype, subscribe, and whatever other YouTube things is, you know, important. I don't know, notification bell. Do people still care about that? Thanks for watching.